Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Yeah. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit My of My friend peace. returning to the show, Lisa Rodriguez, aka Carla from Next Friday. <laughs> let's let's jump right back into it. Um first sure. off, you know, um RIP to Debo, um, you know, aka Tiny Lester. We just lost him not too long ago. That's uh, right. Yeah, and, and we also lost Pops. I don't think we uh, yeah. got a chance to talk last about year, Pops. Last year, and then this year was um, Tiny Lister yeah. and rest in peace yeah. um, to him and to, and my prayers go out to um, both of uh, their families. Um, it's sad, you know? It's really, really sad, you know? It sucks getting old sometimes. And I see, I see, I see um, his son on um, Instagram, John Witherspoon's son. Mm-hmm. JD, I think it is. I follow him. Okay. <laughs> I just lost my father this year because um, of COVID as well. I mean, I'm sorry, not this year, last year. 2020 was really bad. Yeah. So, All right, very sad. Pops. I'm in intense therapy, though, you guys. Everything's okay. I'm in intense psychotherapy. It's okay to grieve. You know what? That's good. I, I encourage more people <laughs> of color to go to therapy. Real talk. I've been to therapy. Please. Like, we really need to do that. We, we got to knock this machismo thing that we have. Like, oh, therapy's for pussies. No, therapy will help you out. It's helped me out. It's I'm sure it's good. helping you out. Yeah. Oh, my God. You don't even know. We're ta- So, I was diagnosed with PTSD. Okay. Um, so, we're tackling the trauma little by little and my therapist is awesome she's mexican hey and irish oh, shit. What's, her <laughs> and I- so, what's her instagram i'm asking for a friend no i'm just kidding i don't know what her instagram <laughs> is, but, no, no no but honestly it's been the best thing that i've ever done for myself is get go to psychotherapy like every week every single week we tackle first it was my dad you know grieving and just you know anything that pops up or triggers or things that remind me of like when I was younger, I was in a group home and abandonment issues and all this shit, you know? I was watching Marilyn Monroe uh-huh. like her younger years. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I've never had to sleep for a role or anything like that, but her, it was, it, we have parallel lives, you know? Her mother was an institution, so was mine. My mother was schizophrenic, crazy, just being group homes. All we wanted was just to be loved, you know? <laughs> So many parallels in there. And she's a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. Uh, but anyways, I'm, I'm, the ther- back to the therapy. The therapy has been awesome. I, I'm getting my kids not this week. I'm going to wait another month. I'm going to go to New York and then bring them over here for like a month. Nice. So that's good. Everything is working out okay, great because of this therapy. Growing up without a pops and, you know, living in certain parts of Los Angeles that weren't the best neighborhoods, you know, things like that. So I myself yeah. suffer from some sort of PSD. PTSD as well. Trauma, yes. yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's a lot, and like I, I never year. knew. I think none of us know that we had trauma from when we were younger, and just it kind of like rolls over. Like I was equating love with being abused. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's love. So I would be in really bad relationships, like equating, you know, them acting a certain way. You know, very bossy, very like taking control and I thought that was love and it's not yeah. you know what I'm saying that's not love <laughs> so I'm learning this when I'm 48 years old almost 49 yeah. and, and that's that's a trip because yeah like you said we go our whole life you know dealing with this not even knowing what is it called what is this called that I'm dealing with it has to be something and then you start talking yeah. to someone and you're like holy shit okay it makes sense <laughs> yeah and that's why I have this show I mean this show is kind of like therapy for me too because I can just <laughs> let all of my feelings out and just talk to the world and when there's a social issue I want to discuss I can just hop on and press record oh a colony is coming but it's from Venus and if you're still alive I think you'll see how we differ and I agree with you about what they call music so. I'm at a crossroads every damn day Looking back in my past when I sleep But living on the edge now I'm doing enough Iniquity down to my feet What do I do when I need a little food And I gotta get the money for the rent Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord Come my son, he can give me some money, repent What? What? Thank you I really love you baby so I spank you Life is a west straight, fucking you up Living in a prison, I'ma shank you 
So what's love got to do with it? When it with my heart on my sleeve, I'm a foe. But she said she loved me, she wanna hug me, and but she stories get told. And I spy with my little mind's eye, dreams that are beyond what you can see in daylight, baby. Ignore the rain, and everything gon' be okay. While the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay Yeah What are the chances? You're picking a flight, we're leaving tonight Pack up your bags, we're leaving this place and this baggage Cause what can we do? While Rome is collapsing but not in a day, we'll be okay Let's hit the Amalfia Jackson I'll pull up the map then Cause I'm through keeping up with these Joneses Don't care what they're posting You know, you only see what they show you Let's fall off the grid then Cause we don't owe nothing to no one Darling, just listen and it'll be Just like starting over and I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on What you can see in daylight, baby Ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay I don't even know why I'm here Wanna be on a beach somewhere Be kicked up in my chair Smoke all up in the air Clouds are looking lovely My girl is by my side My gun is by my side But why do cameras always make me look so ugly? And the smile fades when they disappear Till it's only you wishing someone cared Yelling out the window, was anybody there? Does anybody care? Was the rope in the fucking chair? And since God wanna play these fucking games I'ma take it there Bang, bang And I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on what you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gonna be okay while the world burns, I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gonna be okay let me slide on in like I hit a home run Bottle of the night, I get the job done Celebrating life, I buy bottles like I wanna Pour some out for the homies, I'm on ya Reminisce, swing your memory Every time I blaze a tree, voices in my head Keep on urging me, tell them about the story Hate they came from the hood All about the paper, many years misunderstood Thinking I could one day make it on the big stage Amazed at what I say, metaphorical wordplay Fucking up your frequency Catching a move in the groove into a kind of time state Nah, I'm gonna stay high, chilling, embracing the vibe Taking you on a ride and listening for the night As long as you recognize the eyes and sky I spy with my little mind's eye Dreams that'll be on what you can see in daylight Baby, ignore the rain And everything gon' be okay And while the world burns I'll be near the skyline And I'll be biding my time Till I can ride the wave Then everything gon' be okay A little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit My of My friend peace. returning to the show, Lisa Rodriguez, a.k.a. Carla from Next Friday <laughs> I gotta open a group home, foster homes I don't want anyone being homeless ever Like, I'm gonna be so involved That's dope Once they start making real, real money <laughs> Yeah, and we're gonna talk about your OnlyFans um, OnlyFans, yeah. Lisa, uh, actually it's uh, Carla from Next Friday, right? Is that what it yeah. would technically Yeah, be? I might as well monitor it, you know from the movie since yes. I only made 50,000 like 20, yes. 21 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yes, good call. So yeah, it's going well. It's going well. I have to um, maintain it to make sure that it's not a, I'm not doing porn, guys, and I'm not, you know, showing my private size. I'm just what can expressing someone, myself. What can, someone, you know, <laughs> what can someone expect if they, they go to your OnlyFans? And I'm going to keep it real Oh, don't see me. No, no, don't see nudes, but they're okay. tasteful nudes. Right now, I don't have a photographer, so I'm doing everything myself. Like, I just got the ring light. 
you know, and so I want to do other things like cooking stuff. That's what I do on Instagram or TikTok. I lost my TikTok account because the Trumpsters came in. I can see it now. Reported me. I can see it now. <laughs> cooking nude with Carla from next Friday. I'm just throwing it oh, out there. Oh, yeah. Just throwing it out there. People love food and they love nude Puerto Ricans. So, I mean, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now that's dope though that's good and I, I told everybody during this pandemic you, if you don't have an only fans or something else making side money you, you're just yeah. losing. you're falling behind you gotta do that so well I, that's what happened you know my rent it was like oh shit because you know i was with my dad in new york for like three months right and um yeah i wasn't gonna do a GoFundMe or anything but i was looking for work at retail and it was like it was closed. South Coast Plaza was closed, you know, down here in Orange County. And then I was like, okay. And then I just said, fine, let me just open an OnlyFans. And I like it. And I think it's cool. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? It's helping with the bills, you know, even though we don't have to pay rent right now. I know Biden put a thing on, you know, evictions, but still I would like to pay it off, you know, so I don't have that. So it's been paying really well. That's dope. That's so important. <laughs> I'm the top 1.5% or something like that of all nice. creators. You strike me as someone who, who likes to feel sexy. Is that safe to say? Oh, well, yeah. I've always been like that. I'm just in tune with my body and, you know, myself. Yeah, I like to be sexy. I think all women are feels like that, hmm. you know? Some. And just believing in themselves and just loving yourself. That's what I'm doing is loving myself without anyone's approval. Like any other person telling me anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta like, <laughs> that's what I'm working on. I'm working on loving myself. Good, good. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Yeah, OnlyFans is, is a very important um, tool right now. How are you, how are you using it to, let's say, stand out so you don't, you know, fall in line with oh, the, yeah. all those other you know only fans people out there wait say it again how, how are you standing out of standing apart from all the other only fans content out there i don't know i have no idea it's i guess working, there's some, huh? showing some nudes i don't know i mean they're tasteful nudes but i'm not showing my vagina or anything like that. i'm not sure mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. <laughs> can i ask um just at, we're, we're all adults here why why are you choosing not to show your vagina I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> is it okay? I'm just okay. There has to be a reason why you don't want to, though, right? Is it because I, of your kids? Um, is it because it, that's like my that's, kids? Uh -huh. Me, I just don't want to. Okay. I don't feel comfortable in showing all everything. You know what I mean? Yep. I want to yeah, say Yeah, not it. don't want it's, to. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, don't right. get me wrong. It's the most beautiful vagina belt I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tight and beautiful. That's and amazing. Funny. It's just I don't want to. Yeah, I hear that's a, that's another step. Then it's like become porn. I don't want to be you know porn. I just wanted to do some sexy news. That's it. Be me, free dance. Maybe a nipple pat, you know, comes out. Or just be me, free. You know. In my opinion, the nipple mm -hmm. popping out—that's way mm -hmm. more erotic and sexy than showing your full vagina. Like that's just yeah. so much. Your your mind spins because then you start wondering what everything else looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. No, that's dope. I'm speaking in general as well, just because I do. I do think nudity is an art form. I'm I'm an artist, and I do believe that nudity and photography and things like that. That's an art form, and seduction, you know, and things like that. That's um. You don't want to give them everything. So I'm I'm kind of glad you're you're doing that actually. Yeah. So everyone thinks I'm like, what can we get? What it's like I gotta do with that? You know, it's like no, no porn here, no sexual videos. You know. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. I mean, I'm still, it's, it's like, I keep it, you know, like that strict, you know, let them know. And some, a lot, actually like 80% of my followers respect that. They actually like me better on Instagram than OnlyFans. Nice. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm more, my personality comes out more on Instagram or TikTok, you know? Yeah, definitely. You're, 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 you're kind of silly. I'm and right. I'm more stricter. I'm more strict on OnlyFans. I no. Goodbye. Mm. Go somewhere else. <laughs> I gotta be nicer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm the Warren over there, you know, on OnlyFans. Do you have a? Uh, do you have any females who follow you heavy? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Loving them to some Carla from next Friday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just lost twenty-one thousand people in, on TikTok. Though I got start all over again. Oh my god! It's okay though. Oh, that hurts. I know. You guys follow me on TikTok. Yeah. No, 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 no. Come on. 
It's just you and me. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go uh -huh. to recess, but I take, take that, that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200,000, I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. Come on. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling Absolute, we put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug, they trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy, replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up, and now we two steps beyond these flames, kicking up dust, never running from the smoke. Hold up, we really want the smoke only from Clone God though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm I'm talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. My inner sugar ooh, free. Ooh. I'm a Gemini, bitch, so you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars. So pardon if I snap, girl, I'm sorry. Bitch, pass me the lighter. I'm about to play Street Fighter. Hot Dugan, that pussy. Like my name, Kenny Ryu. She said she never kissed a girl. Well, bitch, tonight you experiment. Put this tablet on. On your tongue and just enjoy the experience. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. A little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace, a steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit. Of My friend peace. returning to the show, Lisa Rodriguez, aka Carla from Next Friday. Okay, so I'm still doing a movie. I'm producing. Did you know that? No, I did not. All right, so I packaged it. I'm working with two with two people, and I'm waiting to hear. Um, get the green light on that. That's a $5 million budget. And it's, um, I can't talk much about it, but I am producing it, which I'll be in it and hopefully get something on the back end as well. You know? Nice. Um, so I'm just waiting for the green light on that. And then, um, I have four projects. I'm just waiting for Sue Ann Taylor who's the producer and anything that anyone that's wondering what I'm doing, whatever, they could go on IMDb and you can see if it's in pre-production, what I've done, you know, stuff like that. So I'm waiting on this too. That's what I'm waiting on. So she's filming something in Atlanta, you know, my producer. Yeah. And then, um, what do you call it? So I'm just waiting for the okay on her. She gave me like four letter of intention, LOI. It's got to sign them. So then, I don't know. I'm talking to my producers. I'm like, "Am I? Are we doing this or not?" They're like, "Yeah, you're definitely, you know, in these movies." I'm like, "Okay, let's go." Yeah. In the interim, I had to make money. That's why I do the OnlyFans. You know, while I wait, keep that shit. Going. So that's what I'm doing. So yeah, still doing the movies, just waiting on the green light, trying to produce as well, and then also I want to open. I want to do like a podcast too. Like maybe I could just come in on Friday and just on very Friday to your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I would love for you. Like he's I'm like, a, what the fuck is going on today? I'm a phone call away whenever you want to. I live in L.A. I'm, I'm not too far. I think you're in Irvine. Really? I'm in Irvine. Okay. Irvine. I work in Huntington I Beach. So. I got the edible show. I got the pizza. There you I go. I got the hash thing that you put on top. <laughs> Anytime. I just CBD uh, bath. Oh my God, it feels so amazing right now. I said anytime. I'm, I, I love sharing my podcast knowledge with people, and I know your podcast will blow up, or even a YouTube channel. Something just put content out there. Keep that content going. I think that's the yeah. Most my life thing. is ridiculous, crazy. Like it's so fun. That's, I don't know. It's a yeah, lot of that's shit. Dope. Right All now, the little you... things you do on Instagram. If you transfer that over to YouTube, <laughs> you will start monetizing within six months. I guarantee. It's better. Okay, you gonna. You know what? After this, I swear to God, tomorrow you have to call me. 
and let's talk. Like, okay. do I click what I, you know, do uh, I need to buy a mic? I got you. You know, all the equipment that I need, I'll go ahead and invest in it. I, I think it's a good investment. It's definitely a good investment. Right? Or it's just a, tell me. Just tell me. Talk to me. Oh, I got you, How's your girl? girlfriend, by the way? She's doing well. She's doing very well. Thanks for asking. Thank you for asking. Yeah, oh, she's good. doing good. You know, we're making it through this uh, this pandemic together. It's good to have somebody. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, yeah. you know, that's, that's like really important to have somebody during this You guys are so pandemic. lucky. I got no, I got no got. I got me, myself, and all my personalities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, believe me, I got a couple personalities myself. <laughs> hey, it's like a threesome, you know, when you're having sex. It's like, oh. No, oh, my God. <laughs> just kidding. Your girlfriend's going to be like, what, what was all that about? Why did you have to put that in there? <laughs> Nah, she knows herself. She knows I talk to beautiful women all the time, and she loves a, she and she herself Aww. appreciates a beautiful woman as well. Oh, so I love yeah. that. Do you appreciate beautiful women? Like, of you, course. No, I mean, meaning, have you? I guess what I'm asking is, have you ever been with a woman? <laughs> oh, I guess you answered that. You didn't say you were gonna ask me that question. <laughs> you didn't say you were gonna I, ask. I mean, we're just we're we're talking I here. I see the fit. I see the fit. <laughs> there you go. Well, have I been? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Just give me a little bit of peace A steady job and some food to eat I had to rush out of my bed Cause I was late for work My motherfucking rent is due And my boss is a jerk Pencil pushing at the job An intermediate clerk My mama told me to go to school I'm going bananas berserk I work every day Don't know where the money goes My girl is big and pregnant Want me to paint her toes Only a high school diploma I'm smelling the aroma The greenery is burning in my room but life is a mama sita. She glad to meet ya. She back coming soon. <laughs> Better get the broom, my nigga. You clean up your house. She got a little more time to back out, cause she ain't your spouse. But do I love her? I need her. Maybe respect how I treat her. But when I see my baby, I'ma wanna go and feed her. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. I was born in a space and time where people were stupid. Everybody looking for love, fucking with Cupid. Who did whatever they wanted to do with black fist up? Stand to opposition, keeping Hennessy in a cup. Drink, nigga, tell me what you think about God. The Bible is written by man, so people think of a side. Form your own opinion before you listen to white men. The system has got you on American bandstand. And when you get home, you gotta look in the mirror. Take off all the makeup and the wig is more clear. I fear a day when I can't smoke my weed. I drank my drink, my nigga, you know what I need. But success is a motherfucker. Shoes to feel. I got a baby at home. I need them big time deals. This shit just got real. It's going down tonight. Somebody don't get jack, hope they don't put up a fight. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job is some food to eat. Blow that smoke right out your lungs You go to church every Friday Now you're speaking in tongues You gave up chilling with friends Pastor got a bend Repenting on your knees Confessing all your sins to the end How far will it go? Why you make it, boy? He eating all your candy Tasting your own joy Troy, I can help you Let me take you to outer space If you're looking for God Meditate to the perfect place Race, we moving at the speed of light Traveling fast through a black hole Into my day a night. I'm trying to fight against the norm, my eyes are open, you see, cause I can only be me, not what you want me to be, classy, nigga born in the 77, daddy named Orlando, my name Kevin, Lucille, my mama, but Gertrude raised me, Kevin and Delilah, they having a baby, just give me a little bit of peace, steady job is some food to eat, just give me a 
little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of My friend peace. returning to the show, Lisa Rodriguez, a.k.a. Carla from Next Friday. <laughs> so your mo- you said your mother, um, you said she was schizophrenic? Um, my mother, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, and you were in and out of group homes. That must have been pretty shitty. Yeah, when I was younger. Yeah. Okay. What was the um? What was it like? I mean, talk to me about what it was like. I know it was shitty as hell, but like, what's a typical day you know for someone in a group home? The group home that I was in was called uh, Nelson Walker's Group Home. Okay. So it was like all men in there, girls. <laughs> so I had um, you know, I I became really close to some of the girls in there and I call them my sister to this day, you know. I learned a lot. I after school I would do a lot of after school you know after school things like I forget. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. <laughs> it's all good. That, no, I have PTSD, so that's why I'm I'm trying to remember what I used to do. It's all good. I used to go to Western Edition in San Francisco in the Fillmore. And I used to um, dance for extra credit for school because I went to school of the arts. I remember that. I remember it's May, hate Ashbury. I the same things I do now. I did when I was younger. I would go to these stores with these beautiful oils. You know, uh-huh. I do the same as for my bathtub. <laughs> Is it like the CBD oil or the? Oh, yeah, the mother. You know, the group home mom. Her, uh, well, I, I joined a black Baptist church. I thought I was black. <laughs> oh, no shit. Light skeck. <laughs> I was like, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm from Martinique. I'm just all Puerto Rican. And there, my father isn't black. I was disappointed. <laughs> but I was raised by my stepfather, who's Turkish. Um, I moved from New York to Florida, Florida to San Francisco. And that's where I met my stepfather. Well, yeah, they met in New York. Mm. Turkish mafia. And then he had a business. He had three businesses in San Francisco. I think it was good to, like, be in the group home. I mean, it showed me a lot. Like, I mean, they were very strict, but it was, like, sad not having my mom. Sure. You know? Yeah. When she was, like, right over the, you know, I would take the 43 Masonic bus. Mm-hmm. It was a Masonic bus called 43 Masonic. I would go right, right to her, you know, her side of the town mm-hmm. in San Francisco. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so that's a, it. And you are black. You joined a black Baptist church, huh? Mm-hmm. I went to Baptist school myself. I I went to Catholic school first. Ooh. Then I went to school there. Then I went to the Nova Academy. Okay. Yeah. So wait, didn't you grow up in Northern California? I grew up in Southern California, Long Beach, born and raised. Oh, yes, okay. yes, Long Beach, California. Southern California has been my home for a joint a as we speak. I'm literally smoking up a joint. The pre roll. Um, actually, let me go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's this one called? Time, time this up. one's called, huh? <laughs> this is a heavy hitter. Oh, I love those actually. Those are, um, those are that's exhibits brand, I do believe. The two pack, yeah. yeah. I, think that's I want my, brand. you know what? I, you know what I was thinking. Listen, I was thinking of getting into the business, but in, since a uh, Cuomo, Governor Cuomo wants to make um, marijuana, he wants to legalize it and gambling. So I want to get into the business. I want my own train. Very smart. <laughs> you know what I would tell you to do is I would first tell you to just even invest. Just go like 
download the Robinhood app and just invest in marijuana companies and start making money, you know, that way, even if it's $10 here, $50, $100 here. And then really? I'm telling you, and then just parlay that into, into going a little bit deeper into your own strain. That's what I'm doing right now. I smoke weed. I know weed. I've known weed for 25 years. So if there's one thing I'm going to invest in, it's something that I know. And I'm yeah. just throwing that out there. I'm, I'm throwing that out there. So now's That's the time. That's awesome. Now's the time. Yeah, it's like prohibition time, right? It's crazy. Yep. Bob, don't you think it was like watching a, uh, an episode of Homeland, right? Seriously. Dog. With like House of Cards and Olympus Has Fallen. <laughs> 2020 was a Reality escape was from L.A. Reality was fucking movie. <laughs> Kurt Russell's jumping off of helicopters and shit. I'm curious. Um, When's the first time you started, you smoked weed? We? Yeah. I think I was in eight. No, I was nine. My uncle nine. gave it to me. Interesting. Nine. Okay. What do you remember yeah. about that day? Um, I don't know. I was freaking out. And, like, I was like, oh, my God. What the fuck? Like, they gave me pot. I was freaking out. When I was a kid, they gave me cigarettes. Like, it was like, oh, cool. Let the little kid have a cigarette. And I just remember coughing. No, Puerto Ricans are crazy, man. I just have to say, like, Puerto Rican. I can see why my whole family was in the military. That's nuts, man. <laughs> just nuts. <laughs> crazy ass Puerto Rican. You ever heard of a crazy Puerto Rican? Oh, I, I didn't know there was not a crazy Puerto Rican. I, my first Yo, girlfriend was Puerto Rican. Oh. Really? I would love to work with um, Benicio Del Toro. Oh, really? Oh, okay. imagine me and him in some movie, probably my movie, like, about my life. So, once again, your OnlyFans, tell us about your OnlyFans and where they can find it. So, OnlyFans, or also on Instagram, Lisa6444, the link is in my bio. It's at Carla from Next Friday Movie, right? Yep. Is that what it Yep, yep. What's my OnlyFans? Oh, it's Carla from Next Friday Movie, at Carla from Next Friday Movie. Do you have any like discounts for first time users asking for a friend? Yes. And what the fuck do I say? I think it's like fifteen percent off. Okay. All all around, yeah. Okay, okay. How does That's OnlyFans work? Fall. Like is it a monthly you like pay monthly or you could pay like six months? Yeah, advance, you do or... monthly. Yeah, it's monthly. Nice. Or you could do a bundle like seventy six fifty, fifteen percent off for the three months. Nice. I know, this is so cool. It's like, you know, I work in sales, right? I'm like, damn, this is like my shit. own business now. Like and an advertising and everything. And I got to think of everything, you know? Yeah. And how often Thank do you Thank you for having content? me on your show, too. Yeah, yeah. For like, I, I'm glad. I'm glad. Tell everybody how, how much you release, how, how often do you release content? Uh, oh, yeah. Like, I try to do it every day, but like, that's what, if I can't do it that day, I'll just like continue pictures because the pictures are only there for like a day. Mm -hmm. So then I, you know, have to recycle them again. That's why I'm doing that shit. Gotcha, gotcha. You know? Well, homegirl, it's been but a pleasure. I love um, it. I mean, they're like, it's really classy. You know, we support you no matter what. That's really nice. I have, like, really good fans that are amazing. You know, they just want me to do well and succeed. And yeah. I'm doing it I, little by little, you know? As long as you Working keep going forward. Self. As long as you keep yes, going forward. I'm which it sounds like you are. Fun gonna have a good time yet i love it i love it and like i said like we talked about earlier uh if you need anything or actually if you want to get on the phone sometime you know this week I'll, I'll let you know everything i know about podcasting and i'm i'm i'll definitely help you um you know get that going or even a youtube channel or something oh yeah okay so then yeah this week sometime okay cool i'll text yeah i'll text you and then we'll go from there <laughs> <laughs> all right homegirl Love you guys. Thank you Love for you too. having me. Thank you very much. I will talk to you soon, okay? One love. All right. Bye. Bless, no matter one love. Bye. Take care. Peace. <laughs> Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace a Steady job and some food to eat We just passed the 20 year anniversary of the release of Next Friday. And today we have a special guest joining us to talk about her experience working on this classic film. Ladies and gentlemen, Lisa Rodriguez. How are you, Lisa? 
<laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank uh, you. Yeah, it's great <laughs> to hear your voice. I'm also known for my friends out there as Carla from Next Friday. Let's yeah. jump right into it. What do you say? Cool. Sure. All right, Let's cool. do this. Absolutely. Yeah. So where did you grow up? I grew up in San Francisco, oh, born in New York. Bay Area. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. I could see that. And when did you realize you wanted to get into acting? Um, I, hmm, I guess I got a scholarship to come to go to um, a special school. Um, her name is Ivana Chevik Studios on Melrose. And after that one year of this, you know, having my scholarship going to school, um, I was working at Bloomingdale's. I booked next Friday. And I just said, wow, this is really easy. Oh, damn, just off top, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I, I went, initially, I went to an agency in San Francisco, a look agency for um, modeling. And they're like, no, you're an actress. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I booked the, you know, the movie of the week that same day, too. That's so crazy. it's, yeah. <laughs> so before you booked for Friday, uh, next Friday, were you familiar with the first Friday film? I was, yes. It's a classic I love. Okay. Um, First Friday. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, did you have to uh, audition against other girls, or do you know the process that it took to? Get absolutely, Carla? absolutely. Um, my manager at the time, Valentino Fizzari, um, um, got me into an agency called unnamed um, Susan Smith and Associates, and they they did something where they hit pocket someone instead of signing them. They want to see how you do first. And so that's how I yeah I started um, auditioning, um, and I went. I had the flu at the time. I had like four auditions, and I met the girl Carmen, who's supposed to be the lead actress, right? And she she was like, oh, you know, don't worry about it. Maybe it could be one of the girls. And it's you know she was doing her table read, mm. <laughs> and they switched and they made me. You know, I did an audition with Cube and the director and my casting directors. And um, I booked it. I actually was making fun of him. <laughs> a, a few? And the director came to me and Steve Carl was like, Lisa, you know, don't do that. <laughs> and um, they liked the fact that I was, you know, funny. They liked the fact that I fit um, exactly what they were looking for. They were looking for like a Sama Hayek, darker version, okay. Hispanic. Go ahead. Who isn't? <laughs> no, who isn't? <laughs> no, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> Okay. What were your first impressions of Ice Cube? I was scared. Oh, really? <laughs> I was always scared. Oh my God. He came to his entourage and I was just sitting there. He didn't even smile. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, his bodyguards. <laughs> and um, I was sitting next to, ba I forgot her name. She plays Baby D in the movie. Oh yeah. Uh, Lady of Rage. Yeah, I think, yeah, she's yeah, a rapper, yeah, so I said, and she was so sweet to me, she was like, oh, girl, don't, you know, don't get nervous, and, you know, he's gonna be okay, and like, he's scaring me, <laughs> <laughs> this is 20 years ago, it's Ice Cube, you know? yeah, yeah, and I think that was her first acting role also, uh, Baby D. I think so. Or I'm mistaken, yeah, because she, like you said, came from the rap world, um, mm -hmm. someone else who, 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 had their big break out role in this movie was Mike Epps uh, to this day I think is one of the funniest human beings on earth um, but what were your experiences when you first met him oh he's hilarious first of all everyone on the set were amazing and um, they were so funny you know? <laughs> and um, I just thought he was a funny guy um, a wonderful person human being um, just great I think he was trying to ask me out during the um, <laughs> You know, the, what's it called? <laughs> you know, the um, House of Blues, we had an after party there. Okay. And he's just like rolling up a joint just right next to a cop. <laughs> and he's like, we could be like Pub Daddy and Jennifer Lopez. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> I feel like that movie had a lot of improv, especially involving him. Is is that safe to say? That is true. Yeah, that is safe to say. Um, I had my little improv. Um, I was supposed to say that line. You got knocked the fuck out when he when he, when he uh, I guess when he fell off the roof. Okay. And I just couldn't say. It was like twenty takes. I couldn't say because I'm like that is Chris Tucker's line. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 
So yeah. yeah. Now let me let me ask you about someone, a very talented person that we lost just too soon. I remember him first from a movie called Kids, which was just an amazing masterpiece of cinema. Uh, Justin Pierce, who played Roach mm -hmm. in the movie, yeah. uh, that the, yeah. the little white dude who worked at yeah. the No, I actually knew him. Oh, I really? actually knew him. I, well, I saw him. We had a, um, we went to Las Vegas, uh, when we stayed at the Bellagio, um, we were doing a signing, he was supposed to sit next to me, and I was wondering, where was he, <laughs> you know, the whole time, they, and Catherine, everyone told, they didn't tell me until like a month later that he hung himself. Ugh. Yes, and we were in the, he was supposed to go out to dinner with us, and I don't know, they said that they went through his phone, and he was finding his ex-wife, or his wife at the time, and I don't know, and he just hung himself. It's really sad. Yeah. Do you want to share how much money you made on that movie? Yeah, I only got fifteen thousand um, dollars. I think everyone got, a, you know, not as much, um, but they got something on the back end. Mm -hmm. And the person that was managing managing me at the time, um, we ha we actually had a falling out. But I called him and I said, you know what? Why don't you negotiate this for me this one time? <laughs> and I got fucked. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. I got screwed really bad. Uh. Yeah, so we got 15000 nothing on the back end. And Cube and the casting director, Kim Harding, she was great. He said to him, you know, hook her up with my people. And I I wish I did. I met with his people, the firm. It was a management company. And they were like big powerhouses and, you know, in L.A., you know. And they had like Limp Bizkit at the time. They had um, all these amazing people. Backstreet Boys, remember them? Oh, yeah. We had Will Smith's company. Oh my God, they were huge, and they wanted to represent me, and I was just loyal to my old manager, and that's that. <laughs> Damn, dude. Now, were were there any promises made to you that weren't kept, or you know, with, with this movie? No, yeah, not at all. No, no, there were no. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. so you understood they're, at the time. Great. You understood at the no, time. Q, like I said, Q was amazing. Q was like, hook her up. She, he, he knew that I didn't have an agent at the time. I did, and then they dropped me. My manager dropped me at the same time. So I'm like, I got this movie. Someone needs to negotiate. So I called my old manager, you know? Yeah. So he saw what was happening. He was like, you know what? After this movie, you know, have a meeting with Kim. And I did, and she actually reached out to a lot of, cast, um, a lot of agencies because she's a casting director. Mm -hmm. And um, I, she set up meetings for me, and that's how I got my agency through her. <laughs> what was your favorite scene? What made you laugh the most? Besides you trying to say you got knocked the fuck out and did not come in. Oh, what made me laugh the most? Um, I think it's um, Kim Whitley. <laughs> she made me laugh. Is she the aunt? Oh, huh? Is she the when she was like, pick, when she, you know, when she was, she's the auntie. Yeah. I mean, oh auntie, my goodness. She made me laugh. She Ooh. made me laugh a lot. I love her. Yeah, I love I'm everyone so on the set. There was no one that I didn't dislike. Everyone were was really good. They were really great with me. You mm -hmm. know. Why didn't anything else pop up after um, the movie? Um, I guess poor management again. Um, I didn't go with Cube's people, which I should have. Mm -hmm. um, and even his wife was so supportive, his, his wife's mother, mother-in-law, like everyone was just so nice to me on set. Um, yeah, it's poor management, definitely poor management and, you know, not having the right people um, behind you. Mm -hmm. And that's where, I mean, at the time my agent was being, um, I think he was walked out of his agency. <laughs> he was escorted out, something like an entourage thing, <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh shit, that happened to me. And that was my agent. Mm -hmm. So everything kind of fell apart after that. I didn't. My 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 parents got really sick. My mom got really sick, mm. and I just moved to LA. Yeah, no, I'm. Yeah, I went to LA and moved to um, New York. Okay. And that's where my mother um, passed away in 2006. Oh. So yeah, the last thing I did was in 2004, and that was um, It Ain't Easy with okay. Clifton Powell and the guy that plays Kinky and um, Glenn Plummer. From South Central, yeah, colors and, yeah. and speed, yeah, um, yeah. So that was the last thing I did in two thousand four. I do have some good news. Oh, please share it for the <laughs> yes, world. Yes, I will be doing um, a feature in June. Okay. So you guys can, you know, yeah, that's a good nice. thing. Hell <laughs> if you guys yeah. could keep on following me on oh. Instagram and, you know. You already know we will continue to do yes. that. Yes. Thank you for supporting me, have too. You ever, have you ever thought of, like, reality show or podcast or 
you know. I was thinking about that. Mm. I was definitely thinking about a podcast because I love mm. to talk about everything, especially politics and just everything. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I will tell you, you know, just for doing this for me, if you ever need anything, little, small, regarding podcasting, I, I know it all. I've done it all, and I'd be glad to help you out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, seriously, you. seriously. <laughs> Real talk. No strings yeah. attached, you know. But, yeah, <laughs> I definitely would suggest doing something like that because nowadays it's – you don't have to really – thankfully, it's in – unfortunately, in the early 2000s, 90, late 90s, you had to rely on management and things like that. But now you can literally take your own – uh, career into your hands, you know, which is what I'm doing, which is what my partner's doing that Absolutely. I'm with right now. And, and I know you could do that because I, I know I'm not the only one that six months ago was like, where is the girl <laughs> from next Friday? Where is she? Where is she? And uh, it took me that long. And finally, I'm glad that, you know, we finally oh. had a chance to talk. Well, I'm not going to lie. I'm really upset about this YouTuber named Lionel B um, talking mad shit about me. That is where not, I watch. Yeah, it's not yeah. cool because, you know, SAG sees this, you know. Initially, he was trying to help me, right? Because mm -hmm. I, okay, so what happened was I fell down um, in my uh, rent stabilized apartment on 79th New York in East End. And mm -hmm. for people who don't know what that is, it's Upper East Side, New York, very, very nice neighborhood okay. i lived on bloomberg's block okay <laughs> just five blocks from him <laughs> and the Koch brothers and so long story short it was in my family for like 60 something years um my father became ill um ap has got involved they promised him getting him a new place or whatever and so it was under his name i put the apartment under his name after my aunt died my mother died in that apartment i got hurt um, I had a cervical sprain, torn ligament in my neck from their stairs, their faulty stairs. They had marble, um, slippery stairs. We had, it was like four years ago it happened, yeah. So I fell down at the same time I was going through a custody battle. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so let me, yeah, I'd rather, I want to tell my story because everyone has it all confused. So I went to court. So he had a lawyer representing him with the apartment. So he got confused. My stepfather's Turkish, right? And they just said he has dementia, and they just put him in a home in Rhinebeck, which is northern California, uh, northern New York. And literally every day, I'm crying for my kids and my dad. Like all this is over a fucking apartment, and mm. because I fell down on my neck, you know. Yeah. So that's why I did the GoFundMe because I went to Supreme Court and I went over the judge's head. I got it signed, and she told me I had to come up with fifty thousand dollars or forty nine thousand mm. dollars within two weeks. That's why I did a GoFundMe, mm. you know. So, but I didn't get the fifty thousand. I got four thousand. I used that because I was homeless, mm -hmm. and um, I was just, you know, staying in people's, you know, my friends' homes. And then I used it for Airbnb to finish my job in New York. And then I moved out here to California. God, it must have been hard being homeless and seeing walking past a DVD store and seeing you on the cover of. One of well, no, the thing is, you guys, I've always worked. After acting, I little, I only did for like a year or two. After that, I was working retail. I had my own businesses. I had an art gallery. I had, you know, I was doing okay. Then my mother got sick, and I yeah. moved to New York. Then I had a baby. Then I had another baby. My aunt dies in 2008. And I was working retail. I was working for Saks Fifth Avenue, um, Bloomingdale. That's what I've been doing while my ex was going to school. He worked for Homeland Security. So it's not like, you know, that, that's it. You know, I yeah. do want to get back into the acting and it's going to happen. It's going to, you know, in June. And awesome. I think people need Puerto Rican, more Puerto Rican women out there. You know, oh, yes. I don't think they're Mexican, but, you know, I represent everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. This, this, is, this is definitely your time. You had a, you had a uh, uncredited role in Napoleon Dynamite? It's not me. Oh, so it's not you. No, it's not. Oh. I don't know why it's even there. Oh, wow. Wiki, yeah. See, that's why. You know how many times I've been called out on my Wikipedia stuff on this show? Wikipedia oh is God. not credible, people. It may, it's, it's, not, it's some. Oh, no. And in Wikipedia, they have me as Mexican, um, I'm Mexican and what? something else. Cuban. I'm Cuban and Mexican. Oh or something like that. I'm like, what? I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> oh I mean, God. I don't mind being Mexican. And that's a beautiful mix, actually. <laughs> Dang. Let me ask you, what, what advice would you give a young woman who wants to try her hand in acting in Hollywood? It's to have a really good foundation, number one. You have to have a really good foundation and try not to, um, if it's, if they're saying, um, you know, 
come over first or something like that. Like, mm. hashtag me too. Don't do it. It's, uh, it's phony. Phony, phony. Get an agent. That's what I'm trying to get back. Mm. Get an agent to represent you. And they're the ones who send you out on auditions. Mm. And so just, you know, there's a lot of rejections, you know, but if you, you, you have, that's why you have to have a really good foundation, mm -hmm. you know? And just really get into like yoga and work out and just like really focus. It's a tough, tough business, you know? Mm. And even me coming back to it is even tougher. Do you keep in touch with any of the other cast members? No, I wish I, well, I think, no, they're so busy. Um, I had at one time Steve Quad on my Facebook, um, and he still is. And I just need, I just need a referral. You know, he's like, oh, you know, you know, have them call me. Is that's that's not how it works. Mm. You know, they're not going to call for <laughs> <a> referral. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you have to call for me, have your assistant or whatever. And it's mm. like, come on, at least you could do is just make a fucking phone call mm. and get me representation, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, um, and then make that call, Jacob man. Vargas. Oh, Vargas, who played uh, uh, Joker. Joker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he, um, he's on my, he's really busy. He's so busy. Mm. Like, hella busy. Damn, dude. He seems so. like he was pretty, like a lot of improv also. He was. He, oh, it was a lot He was of probably improv. my favorite, you know, character in, in the show, in the movie. Yeah, it was a lot. A <laughs> lot of character. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. The only thing that was probably scripted, I mean, well, really scripted was my character because he just yeah. add me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> But the the one where he falls down, they want they wanted me to have a you know a comedy thing, uh -huh. and I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I can't do it. Oh well, I did. I made up something when he says, um, "Should I six nine? I go, "No, star six eight or something like that. Oh, I, see a little I made that up. Old <laughs> stupid. I was my little <laughs> comedy thing. <laughs> These kids nowadays have no, what star six eight? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Dang kids, you know, I know it's so old. Yeah. <laughs> the movie's really old, but you know it's really prevalent. Oh, it's like not any, prevalent. Prevalent. Anytime, so, any, yeah, it's re so revelant. Go ahead. It's so revelant. I'm sorry, I'm drinking. Um, it's so revelant. Re oh my god, relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I have ice in my mouth. Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, it really is. It's like on TV. It's on BET. It's on Bravo. It's on Stars. Yeah. It's on every freaking channel. You can think of it's yeah, on, yeah. and you know how it feels going to work and like, oh, which aren't you? On oh TV? my god, that must <laughs> oh, that must drive you nuts. And I go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, wear that, wear that with with honor. You know what I'm saying? I know it's probably feels like crap sometimes, but wear that with honor. I mean, this movie is going to be around forever, even in 70 years after you and I are not here. I mean, it's it's a it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. So yeah. wear that. With I mean, after honor. after that, I did like Jessica. You know, it was Jessica Alba's first villain. Oh, you know, okay. and because my mother was ill, um, I couldn't do i couldn't you know do other roles mm -hmm. it wasn't like you know, they were pouring it i just couldn't yeah. because my mother was sick yeah. and so i moved you know like i would be at her you know one of her appointments here in riverside mm -hmm. um and i had an audition and they're like we don't care i'm like i can't do this australian accent right now <laughs> uh, yeah and drive two <laughs> hours they're, to they're, they're, why while she gets her procedure you could i'm like this is how they were they don't i would just not care yeah. you know what I'm saying? it's business yeah. So that's why, you know, my family. Basically, I, I love taking care of my family. And mm -hmm. she did pass in 2006 and my aunt in 2008. Wow. Yeah. Bless both of them. Thanks. Real talk, real talk. What's next for you besides, you know, um, July, your series or your June. feature? June. I have a feature in June. Okay. Um, and that's exciting. And your possible podcast that I just threw back in here. <laughs> yes, head. I would love to do something <laughs> like that. Absolutely, my God. Yeah, it's not really as hard as it probably sounds. Um, it's really nowadays, it's really, really simple. And if you just sit yourself down for, you know, three, four hours for a couple of days, you could literally pick it up and, and be on your way. And, and I know people will tune in. I'm telling you, they'll tune mm -hmm. in. So, I know. Just plant that seed. Yeah, but... 
plant that seed and and more importantly how do you get paid though that's where i want to that's I mean, where you, you got to get on youtube right away uh you got to yeah. get advertisements and we, we could we don't want to bore everybody with this but like i said yeah, if you I ever know. need anything <laughs> like, okay no real talk i got you if you ever need hot it just, just yeah just, <laughs> just hot day, talk yeah so right <laughs> but yeah no and, and more importantly because you did mention whatever that dude is that has that video out there on youtube because let's be honest when you pull your name oh up, yeah i'm no, sorry did i didn't even finish what i was saying with that go for it no finish up no you Oh, sorry about that. Oh, so, um, so yeah, because I didn't do his, um, his interview, mm -hmm. like what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Um, he bought me a ticket to go to Florida, but it's like, it was like, what kind of, I, I never even heard of this airline frontier. Oh, hell, that's right next to spirit. <laughs> and, and I was passing kidney stones. I was in the hospital Damn. three times in San yeah. Francisco, except in uh, September 9th or something like that. Right. Do you know? He he got upset and put that um, other video about being cursed and that I'm battling um, yeah. substance abuse, which is totally false, yeah. and then that I'm battling a deathly ill, whatever, yeah. kidney infection or something like that. I'm like, oh my god, what yeah. is he doing? And so people could be really fucked up in this business, you oh, know. Dude. Yeah. And so that's why it's good to have representation mm -hmm. for anyone that's out there who wants to be in this business, including my my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, you need a very good foundation, you know, um, at home. Mm -hmm. And you also need um, people to represent you because, you know, you, you, you need all kinds of weirdos out there, you know, and they will try to, you know, they're weird. They will mm -hmm. try to fuck you up, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so that's what I'm like. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! I was. I I told him like this is horrible. Mm. Well, and people are listening to him. You know. Yeah, and that's the thing, with with doing things like this, and you should, and you getting the importance of you getting on YouTube as well is to push those videos down the way to where they just disappear into another sea of YouTube video. Basically, get on YouTube and you just start creating content, and it'll eventually just push all the all that bad crap away. Um, Cause yeah, you don't want that to be the first thing that pops up on YouTube when someone YouTube's your name. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm getting people coming to me from all over. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's defamation of my character. Yeah. You know, and I just don't know his real name in order to sue him. Mm -hmm. Literally, I just need his real name and his address. Huh. <laughs> if anyone out there <laughs> could give me, follow me, Instagram, <laughs> oh, Lisa six four four four. Yes, but if you and know, please it's... <laughs> help 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 me help help Carla out. Mm, okay, I mean it won't be hard to find him. I'm not going to suggest giving his address out to any of our listeners out there, but if you want to direct message it to her, you know, go ahead yes, and do that. Yes, So I can have on... lawyers yeah. exactly. But yeah, they don't know they don't know his um, address or phone or um, or uh, name. I have oh, his phone okay. number. That's all I have. Yeah. Hmm. His real name. But he goes by the Lionel B Show. So oh, I don't all know. All right. Well. This has been really, really cool. Thank you so very, very much. Um, once again, give your Instagram out there. And, sure. Yeah. It's, um, oh, and thank you, by the way. Um, it's Lisa six and three fours. Six and three four six four. Yes, and I am four, not four. homeless. Okay, I hope you guys lis were listening <laughs> to. Yeah. <laughs> I just signed a lease. I live in California, yeah. and I'm trying to get. And I have a movie coming out. Well, not movie coming. Out. I'm filming a feature in June. Yes. So that's the yes. That's great. She is not homeless no matter what that dude tries to And still to say. follow me so I can keep you guys posted. Yeah. Yes, yes. Please do that. It's been a pleasure. Thank I hope you. we can uh, do this again. And like I said, um, uh, if you ever need anything, you're, I'm an email away. I'm a text away. And um, I'd love to help out in any way possible. All right. Thank All you right, so cool. much. All right, cool. You have thank a good you. rest of the night. It's been a pleasure, okay? Yes, of course. Thank All right. You guys. Talk to you soon. Bye, Lisa. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, Dre, that was so awesome. Um... I can't lie. When she was eating the ice, yeah, I closed my eyes for a little while, yeah, and I was just like, "Clean the seat." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to clean the seat. <laughs> Woo! And then you got all the pictures going. I mean, she's a beautiful woman, dude. Like, yeah. she, and she was hot in Friday. Yeah. Ad, okay, let's go. You've seen all all three of the Fridays. I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, for sure. Okay, okay. Um, do you, so you're familiar with all three of the leading ladies not the last one so much okay right. i mean i remember it was that the ladies pimp the pimp's lady right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. she yeah, worked yeah. in the um in the in the store yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i remember the first one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah nia long she was bad i watched that one all day every yeah. day oh yeah that yeah. was a classic she was bad and 
and, and if you ask me in the trilogy of the movie yeah the one we just interviewed lisa rodriguez that's your was favorite the baddest of them all yeah i've always loved latinas okay I've always been well a, i'm half puerto rican so wait aren't you and cuban though, and right? cuban so why'd you leave out the cuban fool yeah, well it's because uh, i didn't want you leave out the cuban B? i didn't bring it up when we're talking about she's puerto rican i'm half puerto rican and I mean, you gotta be careful but ah. she might cut you <laughs> oh how many times have you heard I'm Cuban B. Yeah, a lot. A lot. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I used to say it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Cuban B. Cuban B. <laughs> I had that sample. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we got to watch some 420 movies hey, around 420. Maybe we'll have a show dedicated to 420. I want to do a comedy movies. show just 420-ish. Yeah. Ooh. I was going to do Cinco de Mayo, but I think it's going to be hard to put together. I might do 420. 420 is better. Yeah. More peaceful because Cinco de Mayo brings a lot of alcohol. And you don't want you don't want that type of vibe. You want more weed, like more of the chill we'll vibe. Have back to back, we'll have four twenty and then Seagull the Mile, Ooh, like damn, that. Damn, dude, it's going down right here on Super Audio Network, eh? Hey, real talk, man. Hey, hey uh, let's play a couple of minutes of music. Take like two minute break, guys. We're gonna go pee, and we're going to get right back into it. We're going to be chatting with author Frank Lewis. He spent fourteen years in prison after he shot two ladies in an attempted carjacking near usc it was a huge story back in the early 80s he's now a different man and he has a great story to tell and we're going to tell it right here on super audio network dusty vision radio i'm here with my boy dre day all day every thursday 7 p.m pacific standard time we'll be back in like two minutes peace <laughs> 